15-2 is the current bid. You were right, babe! I won it for 15-2! <laughs> No. Uh, I hate electrical work. That's okay, I can fix it. I can fix it. No! Alexa, let's fix it. <gasps> Hello and welcome to Yogi's Garage. Here you have it. A 2002 high mileage Porsche 911 Carrera Cabriolet. And if you've been following along, you'll know about my awesome last minute eBay buzzer beater where I was able to snag this beautiful, neglected, somewhat abused, definitely water soaked car. But hey, it's a Porsche, okay? If you haven't been following along, be sure to click that banner in your upper right hand corner so you can catch up. But before I go on, if this is your first time visiting Yogi's Garage, welcome, you're in for a treat. If you like what you see, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you can be notified the next time I drop a new video. For my loyal subscribers, we're back with an all new season of Yogi's Garage shenanigans. Let's talk about Porsche, specifically the 911. I know this isn't a history class, but I think it's important that you understand the lineage and history behind this classic icon. The 911 was born in 1964 as an air-cooled rear engine 2 plus 2 coupe. Aside from the added performance of a turbo, it stayed relatively unchanged for the next two decades. In 1989, a new 911 with a revision number of 964 was introduced. These revision numbers not only help Porsche identify their cars internally, but also help consumers differentiate the models from others. Aside from performance and cosmetic improvements, the 911 flat six engine remained air-cooled for 34 years. That all changed in 1997 with the introduction of the 996. Some Porsche traditionalists will argue that the end of the air-cooled engine was the end of the true 911. Others will say the deviation from the oval-shaped headlights to the reviled fried egg style and the cheap plastic materials did nothing to attract air-cooled loyalists to their side. But hey, it was the 90s. Have you seen the four Taurus? All of that aside, I would argue that this evolutionary step in the flagship model for Porsche was absolutely necessary to stay solvent. The 90s were not kind to the Porsche Auto Group. In 1992, Porsche was on the brink of bankruptcy, losing over $300 million before turning it around. They either needed to evolve or go the way of the dinosaurs. So they adopted Japanese manufacturing techniques to improve efficiency, and in four short years, they started showing a profit. In 1997, they introduced the cheapest Porsche available, the Boxster, and later the first SUV, the Cayenne. Finally, in 1998, 
the all new 911 coated the 996 was introduced with its water-cooled flat six engine and controversial styling. Despite where you stand on the Porsche 996, no one can argue the importance that this car had to pave the way for Porsche as we know it today. Plus, it being the cheapest used Porsche 911 around, it allows fans like myself to be able to own one of the best sports cars ever made. So today I'm gonna to take you around this cheap, dirty 911, and then afterwards I'm gonna take it out on the road for my first test drive. Let's begin. I knew that I wanted to get a 911 that did not see snow or salt so that I could avoid dealing with any type of rusting uh, on the undercarriage. So this car here was purchased from Miami Beach, Florida, and uh, it was a single family owned car which was purchased brand new for a price of $80,245. So I did some calculations based on inflation and this price lines up to what a new Carrera would cost these days, around $112,000 to $120,000. So this is not a cheap car at the time by any stretch of the imagination. And from what I can tell, this car was treated like a daily driver Kia. So the original owner passed this vehicle on to her son who I believe did most of the damage to the vehicle that I see today. This car did see two accidents, the second one causing the airbags to deploy in the front. When it was finally sold to the owner that I bought it from, this car had over 100,000 miles on it. Some of the details that the seller shared with me was that near the end of the previous owner's use of this vehicle, it was being used for Uber Eats deliveries so can you imagine a Porsche 911 showing up at your house delivering your Chinese food? Well, that really happened here. Although it probably shouldn't surprise me since this car lived in Miami Beach. So I just got wind that the, uh, the car is here, but it is out here on the intersection. So not sure why he had to, he said he couldn't fit down our street. So let's see if we can find him. It's not on our street. Oh, here it is right here to your right. One of the best experiences of having this car shipped from Florida was the efficiency of how I got this car. I used a new service called U-Ship where they contract out their services to local delivery folks and they bid for these opportunities to take these cars to other states and that's how I got this company. So if you are looking for uh, a shipment service, I strongly recommend SGT Auto Transport out of Florida. I don't know if they work out in from other states, but SGT Auto Transport is the one to go with. Hard? Yeah. Not that hard, but it's a Porsche, so they usually drive it. What the hell, person? What the hell? Thank you. So I'm in front of the car. And uh, this car is definitely in need of more work than uh, I anticipated, but that's fine. It's all par for the course when you buy a, a car sight unseen. But this is uh, gonna be a, a, a fun project. It needs brakes. And uh, I don't know if the convertible top is gonna hold uh, or keep the water out because we're expecting rain today. So I may have to put the car in the garage for now. But take a look at some of the things that I found in the car today. So as you can see, the bolts have rusted out. What is that? Looks like an airbag. Hmm. See inside airbags, yeah? May have to repair that. Anyway, see what else is down there. Yeah, it's gonna be a pretty gross experience. Look at that. Yogurt, the mirror. Yeah. See, these seats are wet, so this thing leaks. A little mildewy in here, 
but not like it's been in a flood. It's just water leaking. So I'm starting the initial inventory on this car to check out uh, exactly what uh, what's in it, what needs to be done. I can tell you the brakes need to be done on this thing. Uh, it has a leak because the interior is wet. It's not like it's flood wet, but it's it's wet like it, it leaks. And it, if the car was living in Miami Beach, it must have been leaking for a while because the interior seats uh, on the passenger side are pretty much rusted out and the door doesn't uh, doesn't open. So lots of stuff for Yogi's Garage. You see this smile on my face and most people who buy a car like this would be like, holy moly. I just wanted a car to drive, but that's not what this car was about. This car is about projects. This car is about fixing up a car to its former glory, whatever you want to think about, but it's, it's about passion with these cars. And I'm learning that uh, as I slowly dive deeper into the Porsche fandom. So uh, looking forward to it, and I'm going to start uh, unpacking some of these things. So take a look. I couldn't help myself and started unloading things from the front here. And uh, I've got a bunch of stuff that I don't really need that belonged to the previous owners, including an intimacy board game. And um, I'm pretty intimate already, so I don't have a need for it. But if you want this board game, feel free to leave a comment in the bottom of this video, and I'll ship it over to you. Intimate commands. Very cool. Yeah, this bag here is some sort of um, picnic barbecue, portable barbecue contraption. It's like an ice cooler insulator thing. And then in here is uh, what looks like a, a barbecue pit, portable one. And then here on the side, we've got uh, you know, tongs and things to cook with. Uh, also, there's some interesting things here. Grossness. I don't know what that is, but this here is to help absorb, absorb moisture. So instead of resolving the problem with the leaky roof, uh, they just, you know, bought a moisture absorber and stuck it under the car seat. Uh, cell phone case, bottle opener, not sure what that is, uh, some contact lenses. Babies, sunscreen. If I didn't know any better, I bet you this thing's filled with critters. It's kind of going to jump out at me. I know. Uh, all right, let's see what else. Gloves in a bag. One more. Now that belongs to me, and I want that in this pile, even though it appears to be broken. Like it's, oh, this is, yeah, this goes over the, uh, somewhere in the back here, or the front, actually. So, that's what I put here. So, I'm keeping all of the, the good stuff. The windscreen, this goes in the front. I took it out. Uh, some other things that go in the front. There's the mirror, things like that. So, all of the stuff that I'm going to keep is going to be on this side until I can sort it all. But uh, here's some baseball caps, uh, a mask, and and the only thing I can guess what these were used for, because they were all stuffed underneath the passenger side uh, seat, was that that's to keep it from rocking back and forth. So again, another, instead of fixing it, let's just put a Band-Aid on it and a baseball cap. So uh, it's a good beer, you know, when you want Mexican food. And that's it, really. That was uh, everything of note from the previous owner. Everything else belongs to the car. I did find the user manuals, thank goodness, because the user manual or owner's manual, along with all of the other books that are part of this, that's yeah, so the owner's manual, and then the rest of it is uh, right here. And most of it has been wet at some point. And some of the more important paperwork, like the code, because this thing has a security code that you must have in order to unlock the radio to use it. So that's important. But I priced these books on eBay in moderately good condition, and they're over $100. So, I mean, everything is worth money in this car. So I'm making sure that I keep everything. Case in point, this... Porsche toolbox or tool kit. It's missing two very critical 
uh, tools, but most of it's here. The critical tool that I, is missing is the one that you use to loosen up the front headlights to get them out and change the bulbs because these, these guys need their bulbs changed out. But uh, yeah, I mean, nothing special about it, but this thing was selling as a whole kit, like at Pelican Parts for $500, eBay, $250 to $500 for something like that. So I'm keeping and preserving as much as I can. These seats have seen better days. I'm hoping I can just get them, you know, restuffed or something. And this is the cover that goes over the spare tire, which is over there. So lots of things going on. Well, I just pulled out the um, carpet from the passenger side. And yeah, I did cut it out because it's pretty much ruined. But look at this. Look at that. So this car has probably been sitting in the uh, rain uncovered for long periods of time because it has rusted some of the floorboard out. But not too bad. I think it might be repairable. I'm gonna have to in have it inspected and looked over to see. Like I'm pushing on these, on the rusty bits and I'm not, it's not punching through. But that doesn't mean anything. This here. So, I mean, hey, when you see rust in your, on the driver and passenger side uh, seats, it's probably because this thing was sitting in some water. I'm gonna stay positive. This car just keeps on giving. See that little roach? Ugh. I'm gonna have to spray this car. So this is a gift, it's not really a gift, that keeps on giving. Um, I've, you've already seen that. I showed you the roaches, roach eggs, but uh, this door is got some issues and I think it's, you know, rust related, but look, let's see if I can lift it. Yeah, you see that? Yeah. That's in bad shape there, so I don't know what I'm gonna do there. So I'm hoping it's just this mechanism that I have to replace, because it's a bracket, and I can pop that bracket off and get a new one. So it looks like I'm gonna be taking a door off. Never done that before. Should be fun. Yeah, so anyway, <laughs> it's day one. Uh, I'm laughing now, but honestly, it's, it's I expected nothing less. I kind of hoped I, I didn't, uh, I wouldn't get any rust, but um, so far the rust seems to be isolated to the cabin, floorboard, the railing and things like that. So the railing meaning, meaning the rails that the chairs, that the seats sit on. Um, so I'm not freaking out just yet. Uh, I did have to cut the carpet out, but I wouldn't have reused it anyway. I think I'm gonna have this whole car reupholstered because it's uh you know you'll never get that mildew smell out and uh the top is shot so i'm gonna be shopping for a new convertible top too so here we go all right i'm taking the car out for the first time wish me luck i don't know much about uh this car and whether or not the, the brakes are gonna work but i'm gonna give it a try i'm not gonna go far but i need to kind of get a feel for the car and what it needs based on my experience working on cars so we'll see all right here we go you can hear oh these brakes are really bad I'm hoping they just need to break in but I push them down and they're just Nothing. You can hear the rattling. Stupid visor, I gotta lower that. So let me roll up the window so I can get some sound recorded. 
first impressions it's hard really to make one at this point because um, the car is in such bad shape I mean it's it's rattling the suspension clearly is shot on this car uh, the car has the car has brakes but um, they're not very responsive so you know I'm not I'm not pushing the car too much you know just trying to get it get the feel for it here are the revs of the car hear all the rattling the passenger seat bouncing up and down because the bolts are missing what a great first impression uh, to, to driving a car like this Looks like the brakes were just on the rusty side because now they're they are responding better. So I may be able to take this car out to a fellow Renlister and have the Duramatic diagnostics tool run on this car so I can get a full diagnostic report on what's needed. Driving a stick shift with flip flops is kind of weird. All right, I'm gonna give it some revs. hear every noise on the road and it's mainly because I have uh, the back windows down because I can't get them to go up <laughs> when I'm in the process of trying to lower the convertible top I ended up seizing up the, the windows and they're not going down and whether or not they're seized up I don't know it could just be a switch so now that I've got the car on the road and it is warmed up it feels good being so old and, and ratty you know so um, I'm not too worried about that hopefully so far I haven't been really worried about a whole lot on this car but uh, so far I should be worried about a few things <laughs> of this car it it puts a smile on my face and uh, you know part of me was like yeah that's just a Porsche folklore that's what fanboys say about Porsches no this is pretty sweet I'm in complete control of this car there's not any type of safety features on this car That was nice, and I had tons of revs left. Uh, I hit it about 5,000 RPM, and the red line is 7,000. I don't know much about this car. I'm not about to push it like that. The speed limit here is around 40 anyway. To get to 7,000 in second gear, I'd be doing about 70. So <laughs> I don't need that. Look at this face. You hear all that knocking and rattling and stuff? Yeah. So that was great. Um, it's, it's an ugly car <laughs> right now, but you heard the engine, it drives. 
So I'm really happy about that. Let's keep checking it out. Thanks for watching. Yo, yo, microphone check, make it a microphone check, give it a microphone, I make the make it a microphone dead. Don't step to me, newbie, I could truly be moody. I could have played the bridge in the movies. I've been a part-time shadow cat, part-time. That is not a guy that I would ever want to try to battle rap. Snap, crack a pop, mind fright.